Guess what? I passed! Yay! I finally passed my roll test. Well, not finally. I passed on the first try. You guys, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. I was so nervous because, like, when I first started, I knew what I needed to work on, and it was my shifting, my downshifting. So I knew how to upshift, I knew how to turn, I just didn't know how to downshift. Once I learned how to downshift, then I was doing well. But yesterday when I took my evaluation, I failed miserably. Like, I was so scared and disappointed in myself. So I asked one of the trainers to um, take me out again. Not for an evaluation, just to drive so I could gain my confidence back. And she did. So shout out to Sue for helping me out. Thank you so much. And um, then today, I had my road test with the actual DOT examiner. They call him Santa Claus, but his name is Bob. He was pretty nice. He was fun. I was so nervous, oh my goodness. So I had to do the um, straight back. I did well. Then I did uh, my offset backing and I forgot everything that I was supposed to do. Like, there's certain points that you have to hit because they have, like, on the, the training pad, they have, like, seams in the training pad. And then you use your trailer and stuff as different points. So, for example, um, when you're doing offset, you have to do a hard right. So that means you're turning your steering wheel to the right all the way. And then you're backing up until you see a tip. Is it the tip of... I'm still confused. I have my notes right here. But I didn't have them when I was doing it. So you, you make a hard right until you see a tip of um, the landing gear pad. Like a little teeny chip of it. And when I did my hard right, I did the hard right until I saw two rivets in the trailer. So like the trailer has those dots in them. And then they have like the columns and I had to, I turned until I saw the second dot from the column, which wasn't the point that I was supposed to make for this particular parking, um, backing procedure. So I, I messed that one up, but I, I did well, and um, I'm thinking too fast, and I'm still kind of nervous, but, so I gotta explain it to you. So they teach you how to do three backing maneuvers. You do a straight back, where you just back straight up and then you do an offset backing which you start in one lane and then you have to back up into the other lane and then they teach you how to do parallel parking so with your straight back you're allowed to pull up to correct your error one time and you're allowed to get out and look they call it gold get out and look one time so I didn't do neither because I knew how to do that really well. Then for the offset, you're allowed to get out and look twice and you're allowed to pull up twice. And with that, you have to pull up to a certain point. You can't go past that point or you fail. And then when you're backing in to your second lane, um, you have to back up to a certain point and then release your brakes. Uh, pull your brakes and um, honk your horn so I guess I can explain it to you I was going to make this a short video but I, I won't make it a short video so when you're doing your offset backing I'm going to show you my notes they give us they try to give us things that will help us learn so for example, your offset backing, the first thing you want to do is line up your catwalk step along, and your, you want to line up your um, trailer tires along a seam on the, on the pavement. And then you stop at a certain line, a certain seam um, on the pavement, and you line your catwalk step up with that. 
and then you're set, that's your setup. So you're ready to go. The first thing you do is a hard right. So they, they have a thing, I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it's they say Ricky Lake staff loves reality reality sleeves. That's how it's written. I don't know if you can see it. So the Ricky means hard right. And when you do a hard right, you back up until you see the chip in the landing gear. Um, and then you stop, and then you turn your wheel to hard left. And you hard left until the trailer and the truck are straight parallel. And that would be Lake Likes. Ricky Lakes, I mean. I didn't use this. Um, Ricky Lakes staff loves reality sleeves. I didn't use that. But they give you this paper. Well, with this paper though, the new way that they're doing it is they're just having this right there. But all of this right here is um, blank. And they won't allow you to have it when it, while it's written in. They took this particular version away. So they also have videos on how to do this. And you're expected to watch the video and write in the notes right here of what you do for that step. And I suggest you do that and um, be familiar with it before you, before you come to the training. So I didn't do this, I didn't use this paper to study with. I actually made my own study tool and that's this right here. Since I already knew how to do straight back, I just focused on these two. And so when I did my offset, remember how I was saying you do a hard right and then you look for the chip in the landing gear? So that's why that's that C. And then if you do a hard, when you do your hard left, there's a P here. So I made that a universal sign for, um, a universal sign for parallel meaning your truck and tractor have to be parallel. And then that means straight. So you, you go straight back until your one feet, until your rear trailer tire is one foot away from that seam that I was telling you about that they have on the ground. But um, when I did my offset, I didn't look for the chip, I looked for the rivet, the second rivet in the trailer, because on parallel, that's what you look for, the second rivet. So I got those confused, but I did well. I didn't have to pull up or fix anything. I got everything in how it was supposed to be. But then on my parallel, oh, oh man, I terribly, I terribly fucked, mm -mm, I'm not gonna cuss. I failed miserably. I didn't fail the test because I fixed my mistake, but I made the hugest mistake because right here, you can see it when you do your straight back you go straight back until you're three feet away from the seam the rear of your trailer not the DLT bumper but the actual trailer so if you do this correctly in your um, driver's side mirror you should see three cones if you see two it's okay if you see three that's even better if you see four that's terrible you terribly made a mistake and you have to fix it. Um, they allow you to pull up twice on parallel and you're allowed to get out and looks on parallel as well. The difference between parallel and offset pull-ups are with offset pull-ups you have to stop at a certain point. With parallel pull-ups you can you can go off the pad and pull up as far as you can. So I saw four cones and then some so I was way off and I was scared, I'm like, okay, the whole entire time I've been here, I never made a mistake doing this, this procedure, so I never knew how to fix a correction if I messed up. So, during the test, I saw four cones, and I'm like, oh my gosh, 
how do I fix this? I don't know how to fix this. But from watching videos and from uh, the trainers telling us and instructing us how to do certain things, I took bits and pieces of all of that and I sat and thought, I'm like, okay, if I see four cones, that means I'm out too far. When I got out and looked, I was backed in too far. So I was about to fail right then and there because if I would have backed in like an inch farther, my rear trailer would have went over the yellow line and I would have failed that portion of the test, which means I would have had to stay here until Monday and retake the test. I did not want to do that. I think he was being nice and let me Anyway, so, um, uh, how I corrected it, I, I don't even remember. I just remember pulling up, and I remember the farther I pull up, the more space I'm going to see in my, my mirror with those cones. I know I needed to scoot over so I could see three cones instead of four. I remember um, during parallel, they said when you make a mistake on parallel, you pull up in a serpentine. So you'll pull up, like depending on which direction you need to go, you'll do a serpentine maneuver while you're pulling up. And then I also remember during straight back, that if you overturn your steering wheel, which either way, your trailer is going to be drastically changed or, you know, turning in the wrong direction. So I knew that I had to pull up. I knew I had to do some type of serpentine. I knew that I could not oversteer my wheel. And I pulled up. I did some type of serpentine. I don't know what I did. <laughs> and um, I didn't oversteer. And I, I thought about how if I turned my trailer, because I, the way I was angled, I needed to go to the left. So I knew I needed to turn my wheel to the right. No, I needed to turn my wheel to the left. I don't know, wait, I needed my trailer to go to the left. So you turn towards the problem. So I turned my steering wheel a little bit to the left and backed up super slow. And then I tried to, you know, I, I kind of did the straight back um, maneuver until I saw three cones instead of four. So I'm not sure if that was a serpentine maneuver, but I know for a fact when I was doing straight back and my, my trailer was offsetting to one way or the other, I knew how to steer my way back into the middle so I didn't go over the line. So I just did the same thing with the um, parallel. I pulled up far enough to where I can do my straight back efficient enough so I can only see three cones and um, that worked and I got everything right. It's funny because when we're doing these tests, the instructors, they can't help us and you know when somebody's doing bad, when they're looking at you really hard for a minute and then they put their head down <laughs> because they're like, oh man, she's messing up. I don't even think they even thought that I was going to fix it or work it out, but I did, and I'm happy about that. So I did that. My pre-trip inspection was perfect. So that's the first thing you do. You do your pre-trip, and then you do your straight back, and then you do your offset, and then you do your parallel. If the tr if the instruct instructor gets into your cab or the examiner gets into your cab, you're all set for your road test. I did well on the road test. Um, it was nerve-wracking. Oh my gosh, it was nerve-wracking. But the whole entire time, whenever I got nervous, I noticed that when I get nervous, that's when I make mistakes and I don't know how to correct it. So in order for me, because I forget what, like I know what mistake I made, but I forget how to correct it. And it was really important for me to think through my steps because it's like so much going on. You have to always keep your eye out and looking around. You gotta watch your trailer. You gotta watch that you don't go over double lines. You don't go to, over the white line. You're not speeding. You're in the right gear. You're on the right RPM. Like it was a lot. You gotta make sure you're not too close to the stoplight 
and you're in, in a high gear and you have to slow down and you gotta watch the light the white man you know like when you're crossing the street and it's your time to cross you see the white man on the the countdown thing and then if it starts to count down you gotta see how many seconds you have until it's gonna stop and then you have to downshift and that was my issue downshifting so whenever I started to make a mistake and I felt like I was going to make a mistake I would talk to myself I would say um, things like okay I'm in seventh gear slow down clutch rev put it in gear slow down clutch rev put it in gear slow down look where you're at watch your mirrors look at your RPMs and I'm saying this out loud the, the, the examiner is sitting right next to me and I did that for two reasons one is because like I said it helps me work through it out loud if I'm saying it out loud and two, I want the examiner to know that I know what I'm doing. I know that I made a mistake. I know that I have to correct the mistake. And I know that I know how to shift. I know how to downshift. I know what gears I'm in. Because if I was just quiet and making these mistakes and kind of revving and clutching and things are not working and I'm just hectic, he's looking at me like, what's going on? And he may not know, he won't know, that I know what I'm doing and I'm trying to correct it he just look it looks like to him that I am just making a mistake and I'm just needlessly or carelessly shifting or revving or pushing in my clutch so that's what I didn't do the entire time that I was here in training whenever we went out on the road to drive I didn't talk to, talk myself through shifting or making my mistakes and I felt like that would really help me so I did that today and it worked fine um, I think I'm I'm good I do not absolutely not want a manual not happening I understand why it's a good idea to have one like if you're on the road um, on the mountain and you're down going down a grade or whatever you know the manual is a little bit more controlling or if you get stuck somewhere you need to rock yourself out of it you can use your manual and you know to rock yourself out of it and the automatic is usually just go but I don't care. I can where there's a will, there's a way, and I do not want to be bothered with no manual transmission, not at all. Oh, I mean, for testing, like for example, if I'm slowing down and I need to get to uh, third gear to stop, and I'm in seventh gear, for testing you got to go through all the gears, but in on the road if I had a manual I would just engage the clutch and brake put it in neutral and go back to third gear I would skip all of those gears I'll make sure I you know flip the splitter and everything is working like as far as RPMs and miles per hour or whatever but I probably should downshift but I can skip gears that's the point I'm trying to make I can skip gears I don't have to go from seven six five four three two one or seven six five four three I can go like seven to five or five to three something like that um, so I'll, I will see um, I don't have access to a truck to where I can practice anymore and Knight is converting all of the trucks automatics anyway so I guess I shouldn't be bothered with you know having a manual 90% they said 90% of our fleet I believe is automatic so whatever speaking of automatic I got to see the new Volvo. OMG. Oh, it's so nice. It's so beautiful. I love them. I hate the fact that I can't get one though. Like new people out of training are not going to get one. But I have a feeling that if I am on top of my stuff, I'm running hard, I'm safe, I have no infractions, like everything is perfect. I could probably get into a, a newer Volvo sooner than later. I'm looking forward to that. I really don't want a Volvo though. I want a, I want an International. They're big, and um, my ex had an International, and I just like the International. But I don't like the dash on the International, and the engine is different. And I'm used to a Volvo engine, as far as a pre-trip inspection. And I don't know too much about um, Freightliners. Before I leave today, 
I'm going to um, see if I can find a freight liner, freight liner, and and look inside and see what it looks like. But so far, I've only seen the internationals and the Volvos. Um, what else should I share? Um, oh, the hat. I don't normally wear hats. Probably like to take pictures or whatever. <laughs> but I, on a YouTube video, someone said if you wear a hat and you're dry, doing your examination, you can just, you know, when you're moving your head left to right, the examiner can tell that you're moving your head. So he'll, he can tell that you're, you know, doing your traffic checks and stuff like that. So that's why I wore a hat today and yesterday. And I'm done. I'm finally done. I'm about to go to Vegas. And, um, Go to DMV, turn in my unopened packet, get my CDL, and get on the road. I want to be on the road, preferably like Tuesday with my trainer. But I know that I need to spend time with my kids before I get on the road again. And I know I probably need to drive for Uber to make some money so I have spending money on the road. So... I can make about between now and next Monday I can make about anywhere between eight hundred and eighteen hundred dollars. Eighteen hundred dollars is if I work twelve hours a day, every single day from now until Sunday morning or early Monday morning like 4 a.m. Monday morning if I if I do that so when I drive I usually do shifts for example um, today when I get to Vegas I'm not sure what time I'll get to Vegas because I'm not sure what time I'm leaving here but ideally it would be t I want to be in Vegas in enough time to relax with my kids real quick and then I'll go out at 5 p.m. I always start at 5 p.m. and I'll work until 11 p.m. but on the weekends I'll start at 5 p.m. and I'll work until 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. and then I'll do it all and then sometimes it depends if I'm tired or not and we have hours of service too so I think now that I have a CDL, I, I really have to go with hours of service. But with Uber, your hours of service start over at 4 a.m. So if I work from 5 p.m. until 4 a.m., I didn't run over my hours of service. It starts over at 4 a.m. I'll go home, get some sleep. I'll probably wake up around noon, 1 o'clock. I'll get back out on the road around 3 because it's the weekend and I want to drive as much as possible. I'll work until whenever I probably take an hour break and then I'll get back out until 4 a.m. and then do that whole thing all over again all weekend but during the week I drive from 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then from 5 p.m. to 11 a.m. and in those time frames in six hours I can make a hundred dollars it's picking up now so I'll probably make more than a hundred dollars in six hours but my goal is to make two hundred dollars a day if I don't procrastinate and I go to sleep when I get home like I'm supposed to, I should be able to do that. But, you know, the reason why I go for $200 a day is because really it's $100 a day. I want to make at least $100 a day consistently. It has to happen, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But doesn't $200 sound way better? Even if, like, I don't make $200 a day, I'm making more than $100 if I just drive a couple of hours. Three hours is $50. So, it just depends on where you're at and what time of day. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just rambling. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm happy that I passed. I'm talking a lot because I'm trying to get out of this, this nervous tension that I've had. I'm waiting for the examiner to finish up with the other student, his, um, his test, and then he'll turn in my packet They'll give me my packet and then I'll be on my way. 
go to Vegas, drive for Uber, get ready for my training with my trainer. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I don't know what to expect. What is he going to be like? Is it going to be a guy or a girl? Are they going to smoke or not? Are they going to be gross and nasty or ni nice and neat and tidy? Are they going to be OCD and like super extra clean or just super disgusting? And I don't mind if they smoke cigarettes um, because I smoke a vape. But what if they don't smoke cigarettes? Because I told them it doesn't matter either or. Because I'm hoping that if they don't smoke cigarettes, they'll let me smoke my vape because it's not a cigarette. But a lot of people just do not understand that vaping is not that bad. Like, they don't allow it in their cars or in their trucks. And I'm just like, I don't understand. It doesn't stink. It doesn't make your clothes stink. It doesn't damage your furniture. It's just like vaporized liquid. What's so bad about it? But I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm happy. <sighs> I had an awesome time out here in Phoenix. People I've met. Um, and the trainers and the students. Some people are just not fit to be truck drivers because a lot of people are stuck in their ways. This one guy, um, he's doing well, but his favorite thing to say is, well, that's not how I learned how to do it, or that's not the way I do it. And I'm just like, no, you got to do it the way Knight wants you to do it. I understand how you want to do it, but for the sake of passing your test to get your CDL, you got to do it the way Knight wants you to do it. When you get on the road, do it the way you do it, as long as it's safe. And um, if you have issues with language, like if you don't speak English really well, it's going to be really hard for you. All of the students that, that's come here who don't speak English well, they did not pass. Because you get one examination on Thursday, which is your pre-trip inspection. And that's when the instructors are examining you on the pre-trip inspection to see if you know it. And if you know it, then you go to the next step and that's your skills, road skills and backing skills. But since language usually is such a, a huge barrier to these people, they don't even understand that you have to point to or touch the item that you're inspecting. And you have to say that it's properly mounted and secured. It's not crack damaged or missing any nuts and bolts and it's not crack damaged or leaking. If you have a problem understanding English or even speaking English, how can the instructors explain to you that it's important for you to say that? And how can you explain to the examiner what you're doing during your pre-trip if you don't speak English well? You know, like this one guy, he didn't understand what rev means. Every time we said, every time the instructor said rev, because when you're downshifting, you have to hit the clutch, rev the engine, and hit the clutch again. Every time he would say rev, he would either push the brake or push the clutch. Now imagine driving 35 miles per hour, you're clutching, and he's like rev, and he doesn't know how to do it. He's like rev, and he just slams on the brakes. We all went flying, <laughs> like, because he didn't, he spoke English, but he didn't know how to, he didn't understand what rev meant. So then we would say, push the gas. And so he would push the gas, perfectly fine. So it's important that you guys, if, you, if you're having a barrier with English, you have to really, really get on that. Um, study your pre-trip inspection like nothing else. Be able to recite your pre-trip inspection to yourself at the drop of a dime, not even looking at the engine or the tractor or trailer. If you can do that, you'll be good, but you have to do it correctly. Look at the videos. The videos help. They give you handouts. Make notes on the handouts from the videos. Watch the videos closely. When you get your offset and, and um, your backing paper, it's going to be empty. You're going to look at the video. The video is going to have it on the bottom, right, hard right, and then it's going to say, Make a hard right until you see the chip in the landing gear. Write that down on your paper because that's exactly what's on our papers already. 
that they took off. So you guys are going to get the empty papers. You have to write that in there. Um, and I guess that's it, you guys. I'm approaching 30 minutes talking to you guys. So I might try to do a couple of little short videos here and there. I want to try to get an interview with someone here. And I want to try to um, get some footage of the yard. I don't know if I'm allowed to, because we're not allowed to have phones out there, but today is not really like necessarily a training day. It is for like the newer people who are practicing their pre-trip, but for like me, I'm done, and I'm just waiting for my packet, so maybe I'll be able to do some stuff then. But um, until then, until next time, I'll see you guys later. I probably will not be making a video until I get on the trainer's truck. Um, so I was told that'll be about a week from now, next Monday. So I'll be MIA for a minute, but uh, maybe I'll record a whole bunch of different videos while I'm out here and then just upload those. So I have like stock videos, I don't know. I'm still learning. But uh, I passed, I have my CDL, thank God. And I can't wait to get on the road. So you guys, talk to you later. And Dolphins Trucker signing out.